This is the VW Golf R32. Before the R came along in 2010, this was the daddy of the Golf range, sitting above the GTI as a rarer, more expensive option. The biggest difference is the engines. While the GTI uses the classic recipe of four cylinders and a turbocharger, crammed into the front of the R32 is a 3.2 litre, naturally aspirated V6. And that is awesome. Other special details for the R32 include centre mounted exhausts, some worse wheels, and, well, not much else. Now, to be honest, I've never really understood the point of these cars. In fact, when I was searching for my next car, I didn't even consider one of these. Granted, I can't afford one, but that's besides the point. I just don't know why you'd have one. I mean, the thing is, the Golf R that we have now, that's a proper range topper, right? Because it's way quicker than a GTI. But this, this is only like half a second quicker to 60 than my car. And for some reason, they decided to give it four wheel drive. What's that about? I mean, I'll take it for a drive, but I don't think I'm going to change my mind. And almost immediately, I changed my mind. Okay, first things first. I've been driving this car about 30 seconds now. I need to say this right away. All those things I said outside just now, those things that I really meant, I still mean them. I feel strongly about them. But I can't remember what they are right now because all I can think about is that. That is unbelievable. So this is the legendary VR6 engine, famously one of the most amazing sounding engines of all time. It doesn't, you can't hear it that well in the car, but it still sounds incredible. When you're driving behind it, it's like, it's like a big angry wasp. Listen to it. I mean, that shouldn't be allowed. Why do V6s sound so good? I should know this, I'm a car person. In the comments, tell me, why does the V6 sound so great? So it makes a lovely noise. We know that, that's pretty much what this car is the most famous for, but does it feel quicker than my car? I'm not sure that it does. It has a bit of a reputation, this thing, for being all bark, no bite, all fart, no poo. I'm sure if it was wet or slippery out, it would feel rapid because of that four wheel drive, but actually it's got a bit more horsepower and it weighs a bit more, so it kind of balances out. I wouldn't say it feels a huge amount quicker than mine. What else? Um, cabin, golf, you know, it, it actually, feels identical to my car in here. I've got a little R plaque on the wheel, but other than that, you could easily be in a GTI right now, which is kind of a shame, right? You would think they'd do something to make it a bit more spesh, but no, never mind. Handling wise, I think you do notice the extra weight a little bit. The combination of the all wheel drive and the big weighty V6 feels a little bit nose heavy. It's not quite as sharp when you turn it, and that's fine. It's just not quite as sort of chuckable or childish, if you will, as the GTI. It feels a bit more grown up. It actually feels more like a kind of baby, fast estate car than a hot hatchback, if that makes any sense at all. I don't think it does. I think for me, the biggest surprise about this car is just how different it feels personality-wise to the GTI, despite sharing so many pieces. Because the GTI, that's all about being sensible and practical most of the time, and then it's a little bit fun and sporty when you want it to be. When you want to get silly, the car can too. But this, this is just all about the engine, all the time. Stuck in traffic, B road, motorway, all you're thinking about is that beautiful 3.2 litre V6 engine and how good it sounds. Oh, it's just, I can't even explain it to you. It just makes you feel tingly. And as a result of that, I find myself wanting to drive this car differently. I don't want to chuck it around or test the limits of the grip. I just want to sit back and relax and just savor the engine. It is a beautiful, special car, this, but you don't want to think about it for too long because you remember how little sense it makes. It doesn't feel much faster than mine. It doesn't handle any better. Same interior, nine miles per gallon. It's definitely a car that you buy with your heart, not your head, let's just say that. There is a reason that when they moved to the Golf R, they got rid of the V6. And that reason is, it makes no sense putting a massive V6 engine into a hatchback. But I'm so glad they did. So 
So what's the verdict then? How do you know which of these two cars is right for you? Well, here's the simple part. If in doubt, GTR, right? Cheaper to buy, cheaper to run, front wheel drive, and with a remap, just as quick. So what about this then? Who is this for? Can you really justify the impracticality of that huge engine? Yes. In fact, I think there's more reason to buy one of these cars now than there was when it was new. Because if you're someone who appreciates beautiful engineering, then you should look at the R32 as one of the cheapest ways into a type of car that's already gone extinct. The death of the big NA motor is inevitable, and there's no reason to get too upset about that, because modern performance cars with their smaller turbocharged engines are just as effective. But there's no denying it. There's something truly special about a performance car with a big, naturally aspirated engine. I can't really explain it. You just have to drive one. And soon, you won't be able to. Cars like the GTI that are practical, affordable and fun will always continue to exist. But cars like the R32, a small hatchback with a big NA engine, there will never be another one. And that is why you'd buy one.